Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the course Basics of Programming in C Language and in this particular tutorial we will be doing a practical exercise into pointers. So right now we have been covering pointers uh, in our assignment and uh, in this exercise what we will be doing is we will try and see how array names are pointers in itself. Okay. Okay, so first just let me let me brief you up with a little bit of theory on this. So any array that we declare has a fixed memory space, okay? So if it is say a character array, an array of data type character, so it depends on the size. Suppose its size is 10, okay? And we know that one character needs exactly one byte of space on the memory. So an, a character array of size 10 will need 10 bytes on the memory. Okay. Similarly, if we have an integer array of size 10, so the integer data type needs exactly 4 bytes of space on the memory. So if it is an integer array, then a 10 uh, element integer array will need 4 multiplied by 10 that is 40 bytes of memory to be stored okay so using this knowledge uh, we will see how arrays are implemented as pointers okay and we will also learn something known as pointer arithmetic doing this uh, exercise okay so in pointer arithmetic what uh, we will learn is how to increment and decrement operators and how increment and decrement operations actually work on the pointers okay so the most important thing to remember is that if you increment a pointer okay it is never so that it will always get incremented by one okay because a pointer gets incremented by one memory location Okay. It does not get increment by 1, it gets incremented by the 1 multiplied by the size of the data type of that pointer. Suppose that pointer is character, the size of the data type is 1 only. So in that case, a character pointer will be incremented by 1. But if you use an increment operator on an integer pointer, the size of integer data type is 4 bytes. So when you increment an integer pointer by 1, it will get incremented by 4 multiplied by 1. That is 4 bytes. And when you increment similarly the integer pointer, say by 5, so it will get incremented by 5 multiplied by the size of integers, which is 4. So it would be 20 bytes. It will get incremented by 20. Okay, so that is how pointer arithmetic works. Now let us see this in a practical example. So what we will do is first of all let us declare uh, an uh, an array. So first we will take a character array, char, and then the name of the variable. So let the variable name be array itself. Now we have to specify within the square brackets the size of the array. So let us specify the size as 10. 10 means it will occupy it will have 10 elements from 0 to 9 because array indices in C language begin from 0 okay, and extend up till size of the array minus 1 so 10 minus 1 which is 9 okay. and right now what we will do is we will initialize it to empty string so this means that there is nothing in the uh, array and all the elements will be initialized to the null character null character is nothing but an sky value 0 okay so now what we will do is we will have a for loop and then we will fill this array up so this will also be a revision of how we can access all of the array elements inside a for loop so this is a for loop for loop is used for repeated repeating uh, one statement multiple times okay so the syntax of the for loop is like this first you have the for keyword then within the brackets you have three things separated by semicolon so first thing is the initialization of the loop variable or loop counter so first uh, we have to declare a loop counter let us take 
loop counter as count okay we are not initializing it over here we can initialize it over here also but since we are using it in a loop so inside the loop, the first statement is to initialize is the initializing of the loop variable so we have initialized it over here count is equal to zero then we have the condition loop condition okay this is the condition that will govern the loop that how many times the loop will run so since the size of our array is 10 in this is r from 0 to 9 so our count uh, our loop should run till the value of count is between 0 and 9 so less than 10 okay or it could also be less than equal to 9 so less than means that any value which is less than 10 not including 10 and less than equal to means any value which is less than 9 and including 9 itself because equal to 9 is also inside the condition so including 9 itself okay so that is what this condition means so let us first uh, this time use less than 10 so this will signify that okay the size of the array is 10 so just for making it clear to read so this is a better way to use the conditions okay so now count plus plus which is the increment operator so at each iteration we want our count variable to be incremented by one so that is why we have used count plus plus count plus plus is plus plus is an increment operator which means incrementing by one it is a shorthand for count is equal to count plus one okay so now here is our loop block within these two curly brackets our loop instructions would be there so how would the instructions be so what we will do is we will initialize the value of array okay at every index we will put the values so how to access the index of the array while declaration of an array what we pass in square brackets is the size of the array the number of elements to be stored in the array but while accessing inside the same square brackets after the array name we pass what is known as the in index okay or the number of element which we are going to access okay so if I pass this as count so initially for the first execution of this loop the value of count will be zero okay then it will get incremented by one for second iteration so when it will get incremented by one in the second iteration next time the loop executes the value of count that would be passed over here would be one okay similarly two three and so on up till nine okay so all the elements of this particular array will be accessed so what we are doing is we are storing some values over here so let us store the value count itself okay so at the zeroth index we will be having a value zero okay so it is a character array so what we have to do is so what we have to actually do is we have to store a character inside this array count okay why because it should we will be printing it as a character so if we print ASCII values 0 1 2 3 that will not make much of a sense okay although uh, these will be ASCII values of some characters but we need some readable characters human readable characters okay so how we can generate that is we can do this way okay a plus 1 so this statement is very valid in C language okay although it might not be valid in other languages like Java and all but it is valid inside C language so what does it do actually this statement it will take the ASCII value of character A and add count to the ASCII value of char character A then whatever the result will be okay it will treat that result as an ASCII value and store that particular character inside a count okay so when the value of count will be zero the sky value of a plus zero which is equal to sky value of a will be stored inside count and actually the character a will be stored similarly when the value of count would be one so sky value of a say it is 95 
plus 1 which would be 96 will now be stored inside array count and whenever we will try to interpret that as a character so whenever we will try to interpret sky value 96 as a character we will get b okay similarly at this third iteration it will be sky value of a plus 2 which would be 95 plus 2 97 which is the sky value of c okay so we will be storing a b c and so on up till 9 minus 1 uh, 10 minus 1 which is 9 okay so here now our procedure to store values in the array is complete now what we would be doing is we will just print the values that are stored in the array so let me take the same for loop again okay I'm just copying and pasting it so here is our for loop similar for loop and I want to print the values inside this array okay so what I will be doing is I will not put a new line operator after the mm, printf statement so so that all the results come in the same line so how I'll be printing is first of all I will have the printf statement then within the double quotes I have to have constant string if I want to print any constant message on the screen plus the format specifiers so right now I do not want to print any constant string constant message on the screen but I want to print the value of a character so the format specifier for the character is percentage C okay and then the variable name will come over here and variable name is array plus we have to pass the index that at which place the particular value is stored so that is count so that is how we will print the values of array and what we can do is for our clarity that okay different values are printed we can add a pipe operator in the print up statement so what this will do this will print one value then print a pipe after that then print another value then pipe after that so each character will be separated by a pipe so, okay we will come to know okay the here one print of statement has ended this is the result of one print of statement this is the result of other print of statement and so on okay so now what I will do is I will save this code then try to compile it and then we will try and execute it okay so it has compiled with zero errors zero warnings now let us try and execute this particular code okay so here is the output a then pipe b then pipe and so on it has printed up till the tenth character in the alphabetic sequence which is j and then again pipe after that okay so now what we will be doing is right now we have just printed it used the arrays okay we have accessed the array as arrays are supposed to be accessed inside C language we have not used pointers anywhere so now what we will be doing is we will be accessing the arrays at as pointers okay so for, for that what we will be doing is that after our for loop to print these statements print this array I will add some code to modify some values inside that array and then we will again print the array okay so what we will do is we will modify the values but we will modify them using pointers instead of using array we will modify them using pointers okay so how to do that now we know that array any index can be accessed by using this so first let me show you the effect of what we are going to do using pointers first we will try and implement it using arrays only and then we will implement it as pointers okay so array 0 I am changing the 0th index or the first value of this array and I will be changing it to say character Z okay I, I have put a character Z inside that so now again I will be printing the whole array and let us see what we get in the output so as expected the output should be the first character instead of A should have been replaced by Z and rest of the output should be same yes so 
here the second sequence started printing so let me put a new line between these two so that it is more clear that what is the first sequence or what is the second sequence so print a new line I will just copy a printf statement inside that printf statement we do not have to print any other string or variable we just have to print a new line and new line in C language is printed using the escape sequences okay in escape sequences we have backslash n as the escape sequence for new line character and to know more about escape sequences and format specifiers you can refer to our video on console input and output in that you will find enough detail to understand these concepts okay so now the new line would come and we will be able to compare our outputs okay here so what we have done is over here the normal array is printed and second time we have tried and replaced the first element with Z okay now what we will try to do we want to replace the first element with Z using a pointer instead by accessing it as an array I want to access it as a pointer so what I have always told in this course when talking of arrays that array name is nothing what but a pointer to the first index of the array okay so that means if I use the array name itself that means I am accessing the first index of this array so will this work no this won't work as such because this means the address okay pointer stores the address of a memory location it does not store the uh, value or at that memory location so if I will do it this way what it will try and do is that it will take the sky value of Z it will try and store it inside array as the address of a memory location but array over here we have declared it as a character array we have not declared it as a pointer so we cannot modify the address which, which is stored over here over there we can although we can access it but we cannot modify that okay so in this case we will be getting a error if we try and compile this program we will get error in incompatible types when assigning value to type char 10 from type int okay although had array been a pointer this would have been accessible okay so how to store the value at this point then to store the value at this point what we have to do is we have to add an asterisk or star which is the value of operator before the pointer name so this means that value at this memory location pointed by array will be Z so we are assigning value z to the memory location which is pointed by array so that is what value of operator means okay this is also known as the dereferencing operator so if we save our code now compile it first thing is that it should get compiled earlier it was giving us an error but now it is not giving us an error it is it has got compiled now let us try and execute this piece of code okay so now also we have achieved the same result the value at zeroth index or the first element value has been replaced by Z okay so similarly let us now try and replace the value of second index so first what we would do is we will try the array method so in array what we have to do to access the first index or the second element we have to pass the index as 1 and here I am storing say Z now I am saving the code now instead of the first index instead of the first character the second character in the sequence should be Z okay first should be A only in place of B it should be Z and we have commented the second line okay this line we were earlier using to store Z in the first index we have commented it so it will not get executed so let me save and compile the code and try and execute it and I'll show you the effect okay so now the second character in place of B it is Z okay so this means that we have been able to access the second character second element or 
first index okay so now what I will do is I will try and do the same thing achieve the same result using the pointer arithmetic so what I will do is I will increment this by 1 okay but wait here we have to take care of one simple core concept of C language and that is known as operator precedence when we did operators in C language if you go back to that video tutorial to refer to this you will understand what I am trying to say over here okay so to understand that you have to watch that video once but anyways I will just brief you up with it so in C language like in mathematics we have board mass okay board mass specifies the sequence in which each of the uh, operators should be used while calculation okay first we should open the brackets then we should operate the off operator okay then division multiplication addition and subtraction so this is a operator precedence similarly in C language for all its operators there is a precedence defined so we can refer to the C language precedence table okay inside that table first order of precedence is from top to bottom okay and second order of precedence is from left to right so there are rows and columns rows are from left to right okay and columns as we know are from top to bottom so within a particular column the operators have priority from top to bottom that means the operators that are appearing at the topmost column have most priority they should be operated on first and then the lower operators will be operated similarly if you talk of one particular row in that case we will have the precedence from left to right the leftmost operator will be executed first then the writer operators okay so now in this case the star operator has precedence or the value of operator has precedence over the addition operator so what will happen is first we will have this array and then we will add one to it and then we are assigning some value to that so this will not do our job if we try to compile it we will get an error why because it is not pointing to a memory location there is no way that computer knows what we are trying to do what internally compiler will be doing it will first calculate the value of array so whatever value is there at array that means the first element array the array is the name of an array and the name of an array will point to the first memory location okay so it will dereference the first memory location that means it will take out the value which is a at first memory location we have character a so it will take out that value and it will take out its ASCII code it will try to add one to it that much is fine this is valid statement but we are assigning a value to that now so that is not valid both the sides we have some integers so that is why it is saying that L value required as left operand of the assignment L value means that we need some variable on the left side so that we can assign some value to that but on the left side you are having an integer okay so that is why it is giving an error okay so how to avoid this situation we have to define our own precedence how in precedence in operators inside C language there are operators known as brackets so similarly in board mask you also have brackets similarly in C language you also have brackets so if you place brackets around the operation that we want to execute first so that operation will be executed first and the outer operations will be executed later okay so brackets have precedence over value of operator also so now we have surrounded our a plus array plus one statement with brackets and outside that we have put our value of operator so now let us try and save it let us try and compile it it compiles yes it has compiled how it has compiled now it has first added one to array okay so whatever the value of that memory location was it has added one to it so now it is the it is pointing to the second memory location and we are saying value of second memory location is equal to Z 
Okay, so this means the same thing as this means. Value of second memory location is equal to Z. So let us see if our understanding is correct. We'll compile it and then execute it. And here it is. Okay, so value of second memory location has been now updated to Z. Similarly, now we can try straight away. If we want to update the third memory location instead of second memory location, we'll just add two to it and save it and then execute it. Okay, so now the third memory location has been updated as Z. Okay, so this will be the this is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth memory location would be J. So let us try and update the tenth memory location. Okay, this would be by adding nine. Okay, why? Because for the first memory location we use the array itself, then plus one for second memory location, plus two for third, and so on, plus nine for tenth memory location. So now last memory location, that is the J value, should be replaced by Z. Okay, so J has been replaced by Z in our array. Okay, so now let us see what happens when we go beyond this, beyond the scope of our array's memory. We are now trying to access the tenth uh, a array plus ten memory location, which is the eleventh memory location actually. So this might and or might not result in a crash because it might be possible that that memory is not allocated to any other program and C language does not terminate our program. Okay, so in, in that case, in this case, it has not resulted in a crash because that memory might be within the scope of our process only, but none of the memory locations is updated. Okay. Fine. So now what should we try and do? Let us try and access some memory location which is thousand indexes ahead. Just compile. Let us try and execute. So over here we have received a termination by the operating system. So Windows, uh, okay, that is just a simple error message that has been displayed by the code okay so in windows you are not getting a detailed information so what is wrong with the code okay but the thing is that your program tried to access a memory location which is not within its scope so that is why your operating system killed that program i hope that this small tutorial was useful to you in terms of understanding how arrays can be accessed as op pointers and this would also have given you a deeper understanding of pointers okay so in the next uh, video in the series what we will be doing is we will be taking a similar example for integer arrays okay in that the only difference would be that every time the pointer will get incremented it will be incremented by four memory locations and we will actually see that by printing the memory location the address itself okay. thank you for watching uh, this video and continue to watch the course basics of programming in C language thank you